The blob count tool is used to detect the number of similarly colored blobs within the tool window. It can be used for a pass-fail result, or it can output the number of blobs to a PLC through an industrial communication protocol. In this example below, you can see we are counting the number of water bottles packaged into a box. If we don't have enough water bottles, we will get a no good result and we can see how many we need to add to fill the package. Let's go through an, an, another example. I'm going to use this blob count simulator file to walk through step by step how to set up the blob count tool and explain some of the settings within it. And to do so, I'm going to use this blue dice as my example piece. Let's jump into sensor settings. Because I already have my master image saved, I'm going to jump to step three, the tool settings. I'm going to add a tool and go to the extra two tab and select blob count. So now it'll give me this yellow box on my image and this is my tool window. So I'm going to expand this window just over my area of interest and in my case this blue dice will always be within this general area so i'm going to leave my tool window like so and note you can change this to a circle you can change the angle and reset that if you need and you can also add a mask if you need to cut out or ignore a portion within the tool window so the next step is to go to color extraction settings. So here I need to select the color that I want to pick up on. In my case, these white dots. Now you'll notice it also picked up the background because my background is the same color. And I will show you in just a minute how to account for that. Um, but let's say I accidentally click on the wrong shade. I can go over here to this exclude button and select these blue pixels to exclude or undo that. I can also use the plus and minus buttons for minor adjustments if needed. But now I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now you notice on the image I have one green check mark over the background and then I have four red lines over my four dots on the dice. This is telling me that right now it's counting one good blob, which is the background, and it's counting four no good blobs, which would be my dots. Now, obviously, that is not what I want to be the case. And so to adjust for that, I need to go to my extended functions and go into the size limit setting. So right here, this top green line, that's going to be the size of my background. So if I lower my threshold to exclude that size, you'll notice this turns to a red line as well. And now it's counted as no good. But to say that these dots are good, I need to open up my lower threshold and allow the smaller sizes. So now I have a count of four good blobs with one no good size, which is my background because it is too large. So I'm just going to lower this a little bit more since my blobs are always going to be on the smaller side and hit OK. The next setting we have under the extended functions is this boundary exclusion setting. And this you can simply enable or disable. But if this is enabled, what it does is essentially if my part starts to maybe drift over to the right, and if this blob is partially going out of my tool window, that would be considered a no good blob and it would not be counted. If I'm on disable, it would not do that, and as long as enough of the blob is within the window, it would still be counted. So, just has to do with that boundary exclusion. If you want to exclude it, go ahead and enable this setting. And the last one under extended functions that I skipped over is this advanced color extraction. This is going to be very similar to the color area tool, so if you need to allow a specific color range, for your blobs, you can do that here under the hue, saturation, and brightness graphs. I'm going to leave mine as is and go back to the original setting tab. And the last thing we have to adjust is this limit adjustment. So right now it's saying that one blob would be my good part, but I want to actually allow one through six. So what I'm gonna do is 
make every side of my dice be a good part. I just want it to output how many blobs there are. So you can change the scale for how many blobs you will be needing to count, in my case, 0 to 10, and then you can adjust the range of what would be considered good or bad. So now I'm going to hit OK and finish my program. And now to test out how this would operate, I'm going to go into this simulation. And you can see I have some pre-saved images in this program. As I click on each image, it will apply the tool that we just set up to these images and output the overall count of blobs. So here we have two, six, one, five, three, two, and lastly, four. So as you can see, the blob count tool is easily identifying how many white dots are present on my dice. I hope this video helped explain how the blob tool works and how to set it up. But if you have any additional questions, please give our tech team a call at 888 Option 2 for tech support. Thanks and have a great day.